Hi everyone. I do love the way Airfix uh, go about things, um, especially following the build of the Buccaneer. All that internal framework, some people may say it's overcomplicated, there's an easier way to go about it. But I do love the construction process and I love it because it works and it goes together perfectly. I was also interested upon opening the box to find out how they've gone about the fuselage and the wings. And the way they've done it is really good compared to the old 1983 release. These four large beautiful detail pieces fit together perfectly. The intakes, another worry, uh, need not really. You do have the seams to sort out, but the way the front of the intakes fit with the upper and lower parts is perfect. Not an ounce of filler is used anywhere on that area. You also get parts for uh, later versions of the Vulcan as well, which is nice if you wish. Just means a matter of finding and sourcing decals. So let's take a quick look in the box and let's see what I did with this kit. So I'll quickly show you what we get in the box. I've debagged everything. Um, by the time this video comes out, this thing will have been reviewed to death, I've no doubt. I do like the way they've gone about the wings and the fuselage. Very nice. None of that 1983 Airfix thing where the join was here. So a lot of plastic in the box, but there should be. It's not a cheap kit. So the first thing I wanted to look at was how the wings were done and the fuselage, which is great. But the other area are the intakes. Uh, the way Airfix did the Victor tanker, a bit long-winded, but it worked. And that's all that counts, it works. There's a few parts to it, which means more seams, which means uh, if it doesn't fit properly, more to clean up. So until I get to this area and start building it up, I don't know how good this uh, breakdown is going to be. So that's what I'm going to do is release all the parts and clean them up. So that's all the parts cleaned up. Somewhere in there is a Vulcan. The only thing giving it away are these. Now I've had a couple of comments about the way I do this. I am no way advocating you should do this. In fact, avoid it like the plague, otherwise you'll end up in Agony City. This is just my personal preference and it's what I like doing. There's always the exception to the rule, but most times I do this. I have left the engine exhaust parts on the frame. For the simple reason, the way Airfix have gone about these, it looks very complicated. So when I get to this stage, I shall follow the instructions by the book. So it says 40 grams. Slightly over, but there you go. And then using some very old varnish to act as a glue. Just let that soak through. So I've got all the cockpit parts ready to paint. Uh, you can see how far I've gone with the assembly, as far as I want, before paint. Uh, a few gaps there. Uh, I mean, really, it's all academic. By the time you've uh, put the hood on, you're going to see very little, if anything. Uh, there's some filler required on the seat, it's just side the seams. So the first coat for all these parts will be black. So you can see the areas are painted black, and you can see I've started to paint the seats with basic colours. Just using Citadel paints, only because they're to hand. Uh, the harnesses and the cushions and I'm not worried about the paint being a bit uh, rough because the panel wash will tighten everything up but before I can add a panel wash I need to seal everything in before I seal everything in I need to add the decals for the instrument panels but before I do any of that I'm just going to weather it a bit using some graphite lead
So the decals are on. They are very thin. Mixed feelings about them, but uh, they're better than nothing. Uh, there was no decals for the rear crew. Not at all. Unless I'm, uh, I'm missing something, so strange. Next thing I do is to add a coat of varnish. So I'm ready to assemble all this. Um, yeah, I may have misled the witness here. It wasn't varnish I used. It was thin down lacquer paint. Well, I'm just looking at the instructions, making sure I haven't forgotten anything before I enclose uh, this assembly. Uh, the transparent parts fit very nicely. They're quite thick and there's uh, dimples on them. Ain't that cute? So I fit the bottom piece and you can see I've had to add a bit of filler. That might be my mistake, I don't know. So I'm going to put this to one side now and uh, get with something else. Now to make sure this is all going to be plumb and square, I'll fit the Bombay arches. So, just need to add glue to these joints. So the internal framework finish. I love things like this. Uh, next will be the attachment of the lower wings and the closed Bombay door. You've got a number of options left open to you. I've also drilled out the relevant holes for the pipes and the plate underneath. The pylons I'll be adding. Um, looking at photographs, I had a rough idea where they would be located, but strangely enough, Airfix already put holes in a very similar area so I'm going to use those whether they've got something planned in the future I don't know it was uncanny how it lined up uh, roughly where um, the photographs seem to show the pylons so I've drilled those out first thing I'm going to do because these are two bits of ungainly bits of plastic I'm just going to glue one area first let it dry and then glue this end and then once they're thoroughly dry because we've got a bit of flex I will glue the Bombay doors last. So now the glue's been set, I can add the frame. That fits you with no issues. So all the wheel bay parts and the uh, undercarriage doors, I gave them a coat of Tamiya black paint and then a coat of Tamiya white, but not pure white. I added a bit of black, so it's almost a very, very, very light gray. Spread from one direction, so we've got the black shown underneath, giving it shadows. And sealed all that in with some Vallejo satin varnish. 
I could have painted some of these uh, details here. I don't know whether these boxes are black or whether they're certain colors. But because not much is going to be seen, I wasn't going to waste time doing that. But I do want to pick out the detail. So I'm going to use a wash and accentuate all this beautiful detail. Uh, one thing I want to point out with these uh, undercarriage assemblies is that I've treated them as load-bearing assemblies. In other words, there may be pressure put on them when you put the landing gear on. Now I think the ones on the wing may be all right because maybe the top wing will see it on top of that and hold it in place. The nose gear, the same. I'm going to glue them very securely, which means all the mating surfaces are being cleaned of paint. So we can start on the intake parts. Um, they're pretty good fit as it is actually, they're not bad, but there's still seams there. Not so much with the um, divider, the fairing divider. So what I've done is first, I've given the interior a coat of white, just give me a bit of a head start. So I was using Squadron Putty to fill in the seams, or blend the seams in, should I say. And I was toying with the idea of using two-part putty, and then uh, using various implements, um, blend them in with water. But I still reckon I'd still have to do some sanding. I used my various homemade uh, sanding sticks, various grades, wrap round, old paintbrush handles, and uh, extruded plastic. Ideal tools for intakes. While I was at it, I've added the splitters. I did a quick dry fit and I think I'd be okay doing it this way. I just think personally it's beneficial at this stage to do that now. So I'll, I'll continue cleaning these up and then when I think I'm happy, I should add some paint just to double check there's no imperfections. So I finished the uh, intakes, so far as the seams go. Uh, once I was happy that uh, I couldn't spot any blemishes, I applied several light coats of Tamiya matte white, fairly thick. Now let that paint dry overnight thoroughly and then I went through the process again. Another several light coats of fairly thick tammy white paint. So the thickness of the paint is also hiding any slight imperfections as well. And it's a fine balance between um, low and high pressure. You don't want too high a pressure through the airbrush otherwise it'll just the paint will just bounce around. And you don't want it too low otherwise it'll just spit it out. Now some fine gaps, so I'm just going to use um, this stuff. Focus. What I may do once that's dried is just give it a one more coat of thick white paint. So the front and the rear blades, I've just painted black and highlight the detail with some silver. Simple as that. So while the glue is still soft, I'm just going to fix it into place and then let the glue set with this in position, almost like a jig. So I've gone ahead and glued the, the top half. Uh, very good fit. Uh, the only thing that stands out is a slither of a gap there. Uh, it's fine the other end. More importantly, the intakes. Um, beautiful fit. Couldn't ask for any more. Or could I? So the last thing for me to do are the rear exhausts or the tailpipes. Now because of the particular Vulcan I'm doing, I think there's a couple of Vulcans I can pick, uh, they, they have the extended uh, tailpipes. Now I had these, been sat in the cupboard for many, many years. These were for the original Airfix Vulcan. But thankfully Airfix supplied the option in the box. 
The only um, issue I've got are these fairings here. They're on the resin parts as well. There's supposed to be some sort of starter system, fairings for the starter system. I can't find them on the photographs of the particular Vulcans I'm looking at anywhere. So rightly or wrongly, I think I'm gonna sand these off. Now the exhaust stacks look quite daunting initially, but luckily they've actually put the numbers on the parts. And if they're not on the parts, then we've got this notch system. So with care, it should be fairly straightforward. I think the biggest issue is that it's quite fiddly. First thing I did was glue these three parts. Let it set and then glued the external petals afterwards. One thing I tried with the second assembly is that I thinned down the internal exhaust pipe on the outside. By doing this, I found that the external petals fitted so much easier. So the second assembly won't need as much cleanup as the first. So that's the exhaust nozzles finished. Um, complicated or fussy. Is there a better way? I don't know. It is what it is. I'm just gonna quickly show you the areas that uh, I've painted black. Of course, by the time all these bits are assembled and then the end nozzles fitted on, it is debatable whether you'll see anything anyway. Cleaned up all the seams around the uh, large assembly. Uh, the biggest one was the seam between the upper and lower wings. I've used liquid plastic. And if you want to know how I did that, if you look at the MiG-25 Foxback video about how I did the wings, same process. I've just been testing the other assemblies, i.e. the rear fuselage and the nose and the tail, or fin. Uh, they all fit reasonably well, but the rear tail, sitting on top of the wing or on top of the fuselage, it wouldn't fit properly. The three lugs, I had to take quite a bit of plastic off before it eventually fitted. So now to the thumb bit, he says sarcastically. Um, I spent not a lot of time on the computer, just coming up with some uh, drawings to work from. Uh, the pylon, uh, the fins, uh, the angles and dangles, I think they're all 45 degrees. Also, we've got the surveillance cameras, uh, one under each wing, and then there seems to be one under the fuselage. There's also one on the end of the nose. That's at times like this, I wish I had a 3D printer to hand because this would be so much easier. But I've got a feeling that it would sit in the corner most of the time and then once in a blue moon get used. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to do this the long way around. So I've had a rummage through the um, spares box, um, looking out for some of the best pieces that maybe I could use. Uh, these. Uh, Scimitar fuel tanks, might be able to use for the uh, end bits here. I've got my extruded plastic rod, two different diameters. What should do for these areas here. Uh, what else? Uh, the pylon, I've already made a start on that. Uh, first thing I did was uh, cut out a cardboard template and just married it up to the wing, making sure that uh, it looked right and that this, especially this curve here, it's seated, uh, it mated properly. Cut the pylon out, stuck them onto some plastic card. Now I've noticed looking at photographs, and I could be wrong, uh, that it seems to be wider at the top and narrow at the bottom. You can see I've started to trim off the excess. So it's gonna be really fun whittling something into shape. Very fiddly and small. And then I'll start on these, and then once I'm happy with them, I'll start on the missiles. Uh, I can't remember where I left off now, but you can see I hope you can see, I've had to add uh, some more plastic card to build up this diameter. It's just around 12, which is under 12 millimeters. So I've used plastic card, scored it lengthwise, quite deeply, and then wrapped it round. So I've built it up, cleaned it up, and now I'm gonna add um, the end pieces. I've got a conical shape uh, to add here, and I'm still thinking about how I'm gonna do that. Uh, this is the resin end piece of an Edward P40N. It's one of the bombs, so I cut off to uh, make the front end. A bit of plastic rod. These end bits are old Dynavector, 148 scale Dynavector scimitar fuel tanks. This one's on its way to be finished. So you can see the Dynavector 
parts added there at the end. And this bit here is off a, a Tamiya Sky Raider, uh, one of the fuel tanks. So I've cut the fins out, sanded them, tidied them up, ready to glue on. For the position of the uh, fins, cut the circle out. I don't know if you can see that, I put a line where the fins will end. So now I've got the positions, I can uh, just glue these on. So that's all the additional pieces uh, needed for this Vulcan finished. Missiles, pylons, um, also there's one on the nose, I think it's a camera. Uh, if you are gonna make uh, these, whether it's uh, 3D print them, uh, the mistake I made is that the pylon really should be treated as two pieces. The back edge I've got going straight down and I think that's wrong. It should go straight down and then angled. So you can see the pylon is really two pieces or treat it as two pieces. So it should look like that I think. But I'm sure it's one of many little inaccuracies that I've created. Uh, at the end of the day, it gives the overall impression of a sky bolt and uh, that's all that counts as far as I'm concerned. So now that uh, all that's done, I can continue with finishing off the assembly of the Vulcan. The fin, I had to take quite a bit of plastic off the three lugs before it fitted properly. I think I've said this before, it might be my doing, I don't know, but it, it fits perfectly now, so no issues. So I've checked all the areas that I've uh, used filler and sanded just to make sure there's no imperfections and of course there was, so I had to redo it again. Uh, now that I'm happy with that, I was just going to add the canopy, but I found that these headsets clashed slightly with the inside of the canopy, only very slightly. If I'd have forced it, it would have fitted okay, but I didn't want to do that. So I had to literally rip the seats out and lower them slightly. It was only about uh, I don't know, 0.5 of a mil. It's nothing really, but I, I prefer the canopy just to sit in position and glue it rather than trying to hold it and force it in position. So the seats may look a bit lower. So I'll glue this on. Uh, I've already masked it with Tamiya masking tape, paint it black, and then ready for the uh, paint job. So though it's hard to tell here, I've toned down that uh, dark gray with a light gray. It is light. Now some people might be saying, well, why not just paint white? Well, because white's so translucent, it would take more layers to cover that dark gray. Whereas with a light gray, a couple of coats, and you can see it's blended in already. So when I come to paint the final coat of white, it'll just take a few layers. I just want to quickly show you um, everything masked. So I've applied the white. It took about uh, two and a half pots. Over two pots anyway, in thin light coats. You could use an aerosol can. I just like the idea of the control of the airbrush, that's all. It, it took ages to do. So personal choice there. So I've let everything dry for a good 24 hours. And the next thing I'm gonna do is sand the surface with a well used worn bit of foam back sandpaper and water and lightly sand the surface, very lightly, just to get rid of that roughness. So with a very well warm bit of sponge and some water, making sure the sponge is clean, there's no grit on it or anything. Now this isn't for everybody, I'm not suggesting anybody does this, this is just how I do it. There's all sorts of inherent dangers with this, burning through is one of them. So I just want to take that rough surface off. smooth. So it's time consuming and messy but I like it because it preps the surface for the decals and then the final gloss coat to seal it all in. So I've given the surface uh, a couple of uh, washes um, wiped off with a damp cloth 
And then once it's dried, use the uh, fan brush just to uh, get rid of anything that's dried on the surface there. I will clean it again before I put the decals on and clean it once more before I seal everything in with a coat of varnish. But before I do that, I'm just masking off some of the relevant areas for the antennas. Uh, black, I'll add a bit of um, dark blue just to tone the harshness down a bit. Same for the uh, nose. The three antennas on top, you don't get decals for them. I think you do for the circular one, but the other two on the fin you don't. So as you can see, I've added the decals. And of course, I've created a cross for myself because of the particular Vulcan I've done, i.e. scrounging around for decals for this. I've got the extra decals serial number set, but these need cutting out individually, placing individually, and it's a fiddly nightmare. But once I was reasonably happy with both sides, uh, then I continued on with the other decals. Now, I could use some of the Airfix ones, which are brilliant. The Airfix decals are superb. They go down beautifully. But I had to source the roundels for the top of the wing. I ended up using a 148 scale Meteor roundel. Uh, the other issue are the stencils. So on this particular Vulcan, all the stencils should be red, I think. But I had to use some stencils, which meant the only ones available are the FX ones. So I had a choice of either pink or yellow. I've only selected the prominent stencils. I haven't used all of them. So I'll let these settle and dry. Then I'll give a quick wipe over with a damp cloth. And then I'm going to seal everything in with Tamiya satin varnish. So with the satin varnish applied and dried, I'm going to try and break up this slab of white. I've decided to faff around with pastels. Using a chisel brush, taking lots off. I don't want very much on the end of this brush. And then with a bit of uh, cartridge paper, just to give me a demarcation. It doesn't take much. You'd be surprised how very little you need to break the surface up. So I'm not going to do this everywhere. The key to this is knowing when to stop. Now for the underneath, there are some quite bad stains. And I'm going to use oils, which are richer in colour. Once again, wipe all the excess off the brush and just very lightly. It's better to build up than to take away. I'm blending everything in with some white spirits. So with the weathering, I can always come back to it at a later date if I want. But the next thing to do is to finish the assembly of this Vulcan. Um, I've lost one of the struts for the nose wheel door and you can guarantee as soon as I've done and dusted and finish I'll find it and it'll be there laughing at me so I'll have to do without I could make one from scratch but life's too short So that's it all assembled. Um, issues, uh, the undercarriage gear. Maybe it'd been easier to treat the pieces separately as the instructions because I had to do quite a bit of twisting on this front strut here to get it to fit in the bay. 
So I didn't come across any major issues really, other than the fin, which I talk about in the build, which is something and nothing, uh, probably my own doing. Other than that, a fantastic kit, goes together beautifully. So I want to thank you for watching, and I do hope to see you for the next video.